Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Arunachal Pradesh in India. It is the easternmost part of India. So Arunachal Pradesh means the land of the dawn lit mountains because it sees India's first sunlight, its first dawn every day. And the mountains it refers to are, of course, the Himalaya mountains, which dominate like this whole area here, but the entire region is very, very mountainous. Lots of beautiful valleys and rivers flowing through them. The most famous definitely being the Brahmaputra, you can see here in a song. It flows down from the mountains down through there. The highest mountain is Kong To, just right over here. It's never been climbed, only because it's too treacherous. People have tried. The capital is Itanagar, but also a very important town that we're going to talk about is Tawang. You can see right here. Now this region is very well known for its Buddhist temples and monasteries, things like that, the Tsongs, which you can find a lot in neighboring Bhutan, but a Tsong is basically like a, a fortified Buddhist monastery, like kind of like a fort, but for monks. And that is because you can see this border here is with Tibet. There's also a border with Myanmar over here, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this border, which as you can see is dotted on the map. And we'll talk about why that is in its history along with this dotted line you can see right there. Also very important to its history. Even as late as a week ago of me filming this, these dots are important. So let's talk about it. Because this area has been part of Tibetan culture for a long, long, long time. The Manpa Kingdom controlled the area from 500 BCE to 600 CE. And after that, it was controlled by the Tibetan Empire. So, of course, a lot of Tibetan culture was around in this area, of course, because it was part of Tibet. But there were many different ethnic groups here, and there still are today. There's hundreds of languages spoken in Arunachal. But, um, of course, the Tibetans brought Tibetan Buddhism with them, but um, there are still people here that practice animistic religion. The one that comes up the most is called Doni Polo. And um, one of the, I would say, probably the most famous tribe of people here is the Apatani. And I, um, I pulled out my tablet to show you some pictures of the women because they practice something very distinct. If I can make my tablet work here. There we go. They pierce their noses or they, they, they plug their noses. They have these beautiful facial tattoos and nose plugs and that's because neighboring tribes used to kidnap the women to, you know, take as brides. So they thought, let's make our girls very ugly. And so they started giving them these tattoos and plugs, and then it just became part of the culture and way of life of this tribe. But now it's considered illegal. And so you can see all of the women that have these are very old ladies. And that's because it's been outlawed for quite a few decades now. So many of the women don't have tattoos and nose plugs, but Pretty much all the older women do. It's definitely like the most famous 
culture in the area or you know indigenous culture I should say that's not just like Indian you know they're their own thing so fast forward to the 20th century I should say you know during that time of the Tibetan control they built all of those beautiful forts and temples and songs and things just you know that so we'll take a look at the Mongol culture 20th century the British are taking control of India it's the British Raj and they are bumping up against the mountains here against Tibet here so the British sit down with Tibetan officials in 1913 and decide to draw up a line dividing the areas because the British had claimed this area as the Northeast Frontier Agency. They wanted to be able to draw it on a map. So they created the McMahon Line, just delineating where the British Raj ended and Tibet began. But China completely ignored it, still ignores it to this day, because they've always claimed Tibet and said, well, Tibet can't sign treaties, Tibet can't establish borders because Tibet is part of China. So we find this null and void. And that would come to a head by 1962. So India is very well in its independence, right? It has been for almost 20 years at this point. Uh, China had invaded and is still occupying Tibet, but they invaded in 1950, I want to say 501. And things are becoming tense between the two countries here at the border. So China invaded in 1962, triggering the Sino-Indian War. It lasted only a month. China managed to invade and they occupied, and then they declared a ceasefire and said, well, we're all good here, and they left. You know, with the assumption that they had conquered the area, but they have not done anything to it since, so people just continue to live their lives as part of India. And in 1972, this region was finally renamed from the horrendous name of the Northeast Frontier Agency to the beautiful name of Arunachal Pradesh. Now, I said that these borders are important, these lines are important. This area is what China claims. So if you look at a map of China created by China, this is part of China. They call it South Tibet. And like I said, this was brought up again like just almost two weeks ago now from when I'm filming this. So, in March 2024, which is when I'm filming this, but in March 2024, India opened the Sela Tunnel, which connects Toang to um, Guwahati down here in Assam, which again, we're going to talk about in a few weeks. It is the longest bilane tunnel in the world. So, new tunnel just dropped the longest two-laned tunnel in the world, which you can see is ridiculously long, right? But it was established to connect this region with the rest of India in a way more effective way because you can only really get to most of these areas by airplane. Now you can drive there, which is great. I should have also mentioned during geography, this is India's most sparsely populated state the most populated country in the world. And this is its least populated state. So it'll help, you know, connect it to the more populous parts of the country, which is beneficial for many ways. By the way, it's called the Sela Tunnel. It's named after a Mampa lady who fought against the Chinese during the Sino-Indian War and she lost her life in that conflict. So they named it after her in her memory. So China, of 
course, made an official announcement denouncing the tunnel, saying, um, this is obviously part of China and the Indian government has no business doing these massive construction projects in our region. What is Modi thinking? Yada, yada, yada. They're probably not going to do anything because they literally have not done anything in this area since the 1960s. China's completely different since then. Um, so we'll kind of have to keep an eye on that and see if anything comes of that. Probably not. China's been a lot more laid back in um, being aggressive toward other countries in the past, you know, 20 years or so. Um, but still good to keep an eye on it. Anyway, I think that's all that I wanted to say about history. Why don't I go and grab my tablet so I can show you these beautiful mountains, some of the reserves here, and some of these beautiful monasteries and temples. Let's, let's go check it out. So, you cannot tell, but it's the next day, actually. Um, if anything from the previous part of this video seemed really rushed. I don't know. I, I have not watched it back. I'm a little too nervous to. I think I was dealing with some food poisoning, to be honest. That's what I think it was. Because I was sitting down to film and I could feel my stomach just like nodding up, feeling like something's trying to claw its way out. It felt horrible. And I'm like, it's fine. It'll pass. Let me just, you know, film. It did not pass. And I felt wretched for a long time until like, oh, well, okay, let's see, because you don't know what time it is. For at least like 16 to 20 hours, I was just not well, <laughs> but I'm all better now. So again, if anything seemed a little, I don't know, like I was hopping around, I think a lot, um, it's because my stomach felt absolutely wretched, <laughs> but I'm much better now. Let's check out Arunachal Pradesh. Let's zoom out so we can see exactly where we are in the world. So here you can see the Himalaya mountains, right? The world's tallest mountains. And you can see from above this side it's all green. This side is not so much because we have the Indian Ocean down here, right? Creating this really lush, beautiful environment. We are going to start off, I think, in Itanagar. Why not start in the capital? There's some interesting sites here. I'm starting off with... I think we should start with... I think it's over here. By this temple. The State Museum. And we've got lots of really cool artifacts here. Some dioramas. Looks like like ancient Hindu culture there. Some really cool masks. Aren't those neat? It's kind of like Grimish a little bit, but also like like Hindu, some Chinese looking stuff. Like it looks so neat. And we have these cool little displays, some old skulls. So um, the indigenous religion here, when someone dies, they slaughter like a bowl, I guess, and then put their skulls on top of the graves. Because so I think that's what these are, old grave markings. Old airplane, probably from the war, right? And some rifles. Some really cool statues here. Aren't those fascinating? My goodness, I wonder what stories behind them. Beautiful cloth. All the gorgeous designs on the side, right? A little map there. Of, oh, sorry, that's a map of all the different indigenous cultures. And cool stonework, some Buddhas, and yeah, neat. A little history with the little pots. <laughs> neat artwork here, and some mountain climbers because, ooh, and I love these. Look at those spears. So cool. Lots and lots of mountain climbing happens here, so as you can imagine. Lots of mountain climbers come to this region to climb these mountains. Let's check out 
the beautiful Buddhist temple here. It's so lovely. Big stupa, I believe. And we have the, oh goodness, I think I'm still out of here. What are they called? The, the spinning wheels. <laughs> That's the word. Oh dear. I forgot the word wheel. Look how detailed. It's like decorated like a Hindu temple, but it's all Buddhist art. Isn't that lovely? There's just something about religious buildings that just fascinate me, like any religion. And of course you have prayer flags, a big part of Tibetan Buddhism. And it's very lovely. Well, look at all those flags. My goodness, I've never seen so many all in one place. Usually see them strung along the mountains, right? Giving hope and well wishes to climbers. That's pretty. But I'm gonna show you a bigger temple. We're gonna head over. Goodness. There we go. To Taiwan here. And we're going to look at, you can see from above. Let's check it out. Big Buddha. And like these are all interesting. This is apparently, I think it zooms in on this later on, so I'll explain it then. But it's super neatly decorated, of course. Little places to pray inside by all of these beautiful statues and artwork. Okay, so this is apparently Siddhartha, who became the Buddha as he's becoming the Buddha and sitting and meditating and, like, starving, you know? Interesting, you never, like, see him depicted, like, in that state, really. At least I haven't seen it until that. And then, the tourist sites there. I like signs like that. Let's see a little foggy day that day, a little cloudy. It says Buddhist statue is consecrated by, and I'm not going to mispronounce it, but it's the official name of the Dalai Lama on June 2016. Also in Taowang, there's lots of memorials and um, like sites to reflect on. In history, we have that there it is the war memorial, but I'm gonna show you um, Just Want Sing's memorial. So, Just Want Sing um, was the one soldier who defended the mountains here from the Chinese, and he fought them off for 72 hours, running back and forth, attacking the different on on oh my goodness, on coming. Chinese soldiers, and it was when they realized it was just one guy that they went in and took him out. So, yeah, just one guy running along the mountains defending his homeland. And of course, there's a movie about him in India, because of course there is. That's cool. Lots of other Buddhist sites all over the area here. Isn't that fascinating? Wow. Um, I think there's other... Like, there's memorials to him there, too. But there's some um, neat... Yeah, other sites, too. Other war heroes from the Chinese invasion. There's these dragons again. Yeah, see, there he is again. That was my tummy if you heard that. <laughs> yeah, some, something went down inside my stomach, wasn't it? Anyway, I think we're going to close this out by looking at the different wildlife sanctuaries, starting with the tigers here. I don't see any tigers there, but a beautiful waterfall. Maybe there was one hiding. Just the gorgeous scenery. All of these big valleys big tall mountains covered in trees until they reach 
further north, where they get so high that trees like this have no chance of growing, not nearly enough oxygen. But isn't it lovely? Look at this landscape. Let's see. I don't know if we're going to see any tigers at this tiger reserve. But they are very endangered, so I'm sure it's very, very big old rice fields here. Big, big staple food to many different groups of people here. Let's check out another one. Debog Wildlife Sanctuary. Gorgeous. It's lots of, like, water rafting, lots of outdoor activities in places like this. Gosh, oh my gosh, there we go. I was about to say, doesn't this kind of look like, like Alberta, Canada, <laughs> like the Rocky Mountains? It's so cute. Sorry, <laughs> that just came out of me. Anyway, and yeah, it almost looks like Canada, right? Like the Canadian Rockies in some aspects. I'm sure it's way hotter though. Lots and lots of lakes in this area. Next place we're going to has some really interesting lakes. Um, I'm still thinking about them. <laughs> I'm about to click on that video next. Let's see, I think there's one more reserve we can look at, and I'll close out the video down here. Mount Dapa National Park and Tiger Reserve. And what is this friend? Oh my goodness, looks like maybe some kind of maybe like a flying squirrel. They've got that long, long tail. But anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, apologies first of all, but this is an ongoing series, my channel, and uh, next we're going to be heading over to Tanzania, an area of Tanzania that I'm dying to visit all of northern Tanzania is fascinating, but these spots in particular are so neat. And we will be seeing a return of an old character. Topple the elephant will make a comeback. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. I really hope you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good.